Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at Ether Captain's Triad, a print and play slash small retail game designed and illustrated by Todd Sanders. The game is actually three smaller games set in Todd's Ether Captain steampunk universe. Selenian Trader, a pickup and deliver trading game for one or two players. Zeppelin Derby, a short two player Zeppelin race game. And Intrigue, a two player area control game. The game can be print and played, purchased through Todd, or ordered as an Arts Cow deck, which is what I have. The deck is 54 cards. You will also need to include 5 D6s, about 25 small markers in two colors, and a pen and paper. To play Selenian Trader, first set up the four cards of the game map, with a marker on the white number one square denoting round one, and a marker off next to the number one gray circle denoting no encounters have been met. Place the trade market, event track, and ship upgrade cards near the map, Give each player the two halves of their ship, 2d6, and 15 markers. Each player rolls 2d6 and places one of their markers on this space on the map. This is where they will start the game. Each space can only have one player in it. If a 12 is rolled, the player may pick their starting space. Each player starts with 9 gold. Each of the four rounds of the game, the four white squares, are broken into four encounters. Before each round, one player will roll 1d6 to show what the trade market will be for this round. Each turn consists of a roll for an encounter, and then a turn for each player. To find out the event, one player rolls 2d6 and consults the event chart. Blue events don't count against the event track, gray ones do. Both players are affected by the event, and after four events, the round marker moves up one number. Then each player takes their turn. Turn consists of one action of the following. Navigate, buy or sell, upgrade, or pass. To navigate, the player rolls 1d6 and moves up to that many spaces. Two players may never land on the same space at the same time, but may pass through each other's port. To buy or sell, consult the colored boxes at the space you are currently in. The box on the left denotes how many and of what type of good the port is selling. The box on the right is the type of good this port buys. If the boxes are split, either of those colors may be bought or sold, depending on if it's on the left or right. A player may buy or sell on their turn, but may not do both. To buy a good, consult the trade market to see the price of that good, which is the price on the left. You then pay that price times the number of goods you're buying up to the amount that the port is selling. Then update your gold and place that good in your ship. At any time, a player may only hold three goods and cannot store two different quantities of the same good. To sell, a player also consults the trade market for this round, but uses the number on the right for that good, and may only sell the good that that port is buying. Then update your gold and remove the good from your ship. To upgrade, a player pays the price listed on the desired upgrade, and places a marker on that upgrade to denote that they have it. Each upgrade may only be purchased by each player once. To pass, a player simply does nothing. The game goes like this. Players moving from port to port, buying, selling, and dealing with encounters until the turn after the fourth encounter of the fourth round. At this point, victory points are totaled, and the player with the most wins. Victory points come from ship upgrades, and one victory point for every five gold at the end of the game. This is my least favorite of the three games. I like pick up and deliver games, and I like trading games, but there's a disconnect somewhere in this game for me. I think it's that a bulk of the victory points come from the ship upgrades, which isn't something I think about doing as I get too focused on buying low, taking it to the next port to sell high, but it's still a very solid game. To play Zeppelin Derby, set up the Derby track cards with A matching A and B matching B. Pick a player to be player 1 and a player to be player 2. They each place one of their markers on the starting space. Each player then gets four race cards, placing the remaining cards aside without looking at them. On a player's turn, they roll 5d6, freeze any dice that they wish, and may roll the rest one more time. Player 1 is rolling for 1s, player 2 is rolling for 6s. They then move their marker per the chart on the rules card. 2 spaces for 1 of their number, 3 spaces for 2 of their number, 5 spaces for 3 of their number, and so on. Players may also play a card either before or after they roll their dice as they see fit, but only on their turn. The cards allow players to do certain things like discard a random card from their opponent's hand, or switch spaces with their opponent. After cards are played, they go out of the game and no new cards are drawn. The player who gets to the finished space first wins. This is a game I can get played a lot. My wife and daughter both enjoy it, and I can even play it with my 5-year-old son without the race cards, just as a simple roll-and-move game. 
It's a very light race game that plays in about 5 minutes and is fantastic for it. To play Intrigue, first set up the 6 map cards. Shuffle the deck of the remaining cards and deal 1 to each player. From that card, each player picks one of the city-states on that card as their ruling house and secretly writes it down. If, at the end of the game, a player has the most influence in their ruling house, they gain an additional 5 victory points. The players discard the cards and they are shuffled back into the deck. Each player is then dealt 3 cards and receives 25 markers in their color. The remaining cards are placed in a face-down draw deck. On a player's turn, they may do one of three things. Discard one, two, or three cards with a matching city-state on them to place that many influence markers in that city-state on the map. Discard two cards with both city-states matching to remove one influence marker from the map in one of those city-states. Or discard a card. Option one is usually the one done, but the other options are available. No matter what is done, a player draws their hand back up to three cards at the end of their turn. When the draw deck is empty, shuffle the discard pile and place it back face down. After the draw deck is depleted a second time, play is interrupted for scoring. A player gains one victory point for having one more influence marker than their opponent in a city-state, or two victory points for having two or more influence in a city-state than their opponent. No victory points are given for ties. Make note of each player's points. Play then continues one more time through the deck and is scored again in the same way. At this point, if a player has the most influence in their ruling house, they gain an additional 5 victory points. Victory points are then totaled, and the player with the most points wins. This is my favorite of the three games. It plays very quickly, and it has some very interesting decisions about where to put your influence while keeping your opponent in check. I like it a lot. And that's Ether Captain's Triad. Three solid games that all play quickly and cover a wide range of mechanisms. I give Zeppelin Derby and Intrigue both 8s and Selenian Trader a 6, but as a whole I'd rate it a 7.5 out of 10. I should also note, Todd is about to release Ether Captain's Triad 2, which includes three new games and expansions for these three games, including gold and scoring tracks for Selenian Trader and Intrigue.